Hi folks, so the antenna we're looking at today is the uh, 33 foot long or 10 meter long ladder line fed doublet uh, which should cover 20 meters through to 6 meters. So let's have a look then at what this antenna is all about. Hello there, it's Tim G5TM, south coast of England. Thanks for joining me. Now today I thought I'd uh, talk you through an antenna which I've tried last year uh, to fit into my small space, which did really well, and covers six bands. So the apex of the antenna, the very top, or near the top of the middle pole, is nine and a half meters. The end of the left-hand leg is just over seven meters above ground. It's just over 23 feet. And for the right-hand leg, as we can see, look, it's about uh, 6.2 meters above ground, which is a little over sort of 19, getting on for 20 feet. Let's have a quick look then at the impedances we're likely to see at the feed point of this antenna. Now, bearing in mind we're going to be feeding a doublet with 450 ohm, 300 ohm, maybe 600 ohm window or ladder line, whatever you want to call it. And it may well be going directly into a balanced tuner which sits on your shack, or it might be going into a ballon with a very short, thick bit of coax coming into the shack, into your tuner. Either way, wherever it gets presented, by the ladder line to your tuning situation will be different to this. But this is what the ladder line has to, has to be faced with initially, all right? Let's have a look at the table then together. So we can see the ones hand, um, highlighted in yellow, especially if we look at 28 and 24 megahertz there, 12 and 10 meters, they're the two with the high impedance, uh, well, between two, 2001 and 2300 ohms. There's a lot there for your tuner to cope with because uh, 10 meters is practically a, a half wave, uh, sorry, a full wavelength here and 12 meters isn't so far behind. If we go back to the table, if you contrast that with the bottom two, that's 17 and, and uh, 20 meters, uh, especially 20 look is basically a half wavelength, so that's, that's an easy match for it and uh, for 17. So a range of impedances then for your tuner to possibly deal with or for your ladder line to sort of handle as well, but don't forget ladder line is very high, uh, sorry, very low loss, low loss with high SWR, that's why it's such a good thing to use. Uh, 450 ohm tends to have slightly lower loss than 300, but again, 300 might present itself as a better way of bringing in some bands because it's different, different impedance. It's all swings and roundabouts. Best thing to do, get it up, feed it with a ladder line, see what you can do. And if you need to change, I need to tune the antenna, you'll change the length, length of the ladder line rather than change the length of the, of the, of the antenna itself. And by the way, um, if you notice, I've got those high impedances of 10 meters and 12 meters. One way you can get around that initially is to maybe not make your, your antenna a full or a half wave on any of any of the frequencies you want to work. Make it basically non-resonant. And that way, it might, might be easier to bring it in tune. Anyway, enough about tuning and impedances. Let's have a look now at the far field plots and see what uh, sort of angles of, of, uh, of elevation and what uh, gain these uh, different bands are likely to provide us with at the heights we've already mentioned for this antenna. So the way we're going to do this is basically for each band, I'm looking at 20 metres as an example here, look. On the left hand side you've got the azimuth pattern and that's showing the pattern of, of RF right around the antenna as if you're flying over it like a, like a seagull or, or, or a blackbird looking down over the top of the antenna. And the antenna is going right across the middle from the Y axis, which is of course about nine o'clock, right through the middle to three o'clock. And that is looking at it from five degrees off the horizon. And we're looking at five degrees off the horizon because that's the ideal takeoff angle most of the time for quite good DX contacts, long haul DX. On the right hand side then we can see we've got the far field plot and what that does is shows us for each of the bands uh, which angles uh, of, of elevation have the greatest gain and it will also highlight to us there as the, as the antenna is now uh, what the greatest gain is and at which uh, angle of, uh, of elevation we're looking at. So there we go, that's what uh, there's shape, shape up to look at. One other thing on the left hand diagram, the azimuth, for some of the bands are shaded in yellow. And uh, what that means is that's how much of the antenna going round the antenna at 360 degrees, how much of that from that dipole has gain, which is at least minus 6 dB. And the reason why I'm choosing minus 6 dB, because that's the sort of gain you'll get off a quarter wave ground mounted vertical at a five degree takeoff. So we're looking at it in that way as well. Anyway, enough of that. Let's have a look at each of the bands. So 20 meters then on that left hand diagram, uh, the azimuth pattern, five degrees takeoff then. And as we can see, we haven't got fantastic gain. The antenna itself is still very much below the half wave 
length height. And if you remember from the previous video, I'll leave the link up there uh, regarding inverted V and flat top dipoles we did last week. Uh, when And for a dipole to have really good gain, it needs to be somewhere near or maybe even slightly above a half wavelength in height off the ground. Now in this antenna, we're not quite there. Uh, we're, we're, on, we're probably on average around eight meters off the ground in total. So that's the sort of pattern we get. On the left hand side, the greatest gain we got is minus 6.3 dB off the broad side of the, of the dipole, which is where you'd expect it to be. And off the ends, look, we've got uh, some nulls. On the right hand side, that sharper null of minus 16.8 is where the, the angle of one of the legs, the left hand leg, is actually a little bit more shallow compared to the right hand sharper angle which gives us a more omnidirectional. It's, it's the other way around there because it, for some reason it's doing it that way. But uh, that's the difference there, okay? And as you can see in the far field plot, now we've got a 5.5 dBi maximum gain at 34.7 degrees. It's the top and the bottom rows underneath the far field plot. 17 meters, five degrees takeoff. Now you can see in yellow there, that's how much of that particular coverage, 360 degree coverage, we have at least a minus six point dBi uh, gain for the 17 meter dipole, 17 meter band of that doublet. And the maximum gain we've got at five degrees is at minus 2.8, again off the broad side, so that's pretty decent. And the far field plot on the right shows us we've got maximum gain at just over five dB at 15 degrees off the horizon. And actually our, our maximum gain is at uh, 27 degrees off the horizon at the bottom there at 7.2 dB. So for 17 meters, a respectable antenna, because now we've got a little bit, a fair bit of this antenna is now at or above a half wavelength in height, because a half wavelength on 17 meters is about eight meters, which is about 25, 26 feet. 15 meters then, again, the five degree takeoff, the azimuth there. Um, yeah, again, a fair slice of the antenna, uh, meeting or bettering minus six, point, uh, minus six dB. Um, our maximum gain of five degrees is at minus 0 0.9 dB, so pretty respectable. And the far field plot, we're at 15 degrees off the horizon, which isn't a bad takeoff angle there. We've got a gain of nearly 7 dB, and the maximum gain is at 8.1 dB at 23 degrees off the horizon. So we're seeing now the takeoff angles begin to reduce. So therefore, the higher we are in wavelength above the ground, the lower the maximum, uh, the lower the angle of maximum gain. All right. So at 15 meters, we're now the vast majority of the antenna is now above half a wavelength height, which is just around seven meters over 22, 23 feet. 12 meters then. Again, the left-hand uh, diagram, five degree takeoff. That's looking pretty decent now. Uh, a fair chunk of the antenna again, in terms of coverage, is showing at least minus six dB. Maximum gain is now minus 0 0.2 dB. And in fact, if you look at those two blue dots, that's where the antenna slices through, as I just mentioned to you earlier. And the lowest we've got now is minus 7.8 dB. So this is actually quite a respectable, respectable even, respectable, that's the one, performing antenna. The far field plot on the right at 15 degrees and now we've got gain of minus, oh sorry, not minus, 7 dB. And the maximum gain we've got for this antenna at 12 meters is 7.7 .7 dB at an elevation angle of just about 20 degrees. One thing, of course, we need to mention here is at 12 meters and 10 meters as well, if you remember, with quite high impedances to match there. But overall, if we can do it, we've got ourselves a, a pretty nice antenna here. Again, it's some directionality, of course, with dipoles, as you probably know, but some decent gain. Now, 10 meters is my personal favorite. This is why I put this antenna up, or why I will try to put this antenna up, or why I have done before, uh, because of the gain you get as a full wave. This is now a full wavelength antenna on 10 meters. You can see we've got some decent gain on the left-hand side at five degree. Uh, again, broadside is the most, and we've got uh, maximum gain of, of zero dB. There we go. Uh, so we are better than, than minus six dB uh, for the majority of this antenna now. And in fact, even off the ends where you see a bit less gain, we're still seeing the worst case of minus 6.6 .6 dB, which is only just about a dB worse off than you'll find a quarter way vertical ground mounted. On the right hand side with the far field plot at 15 degrees off the horizon, we've got a respectable gain of 6.8 dB. 15 degrees, by the way, we're still getting some decent DX. And the maximum gain is about 7 dB at 18 degrees. So again, we see that continuing trend of the maximum gain, uh, maximum angle of gain being reduced as we go up in wavelength. Uh, this antenna is getting on, not quite, but getting on for two, for a, sorry, a full wavelength above ground. Uh, there's a bit more pattern breakup, as you can see there from the far field plot, but uh, overall, a pretty decently performing antenna 
with some nice gain at low angles and uh, uh, as I say we'll do a decent job for you on 10 meters. Well the Aismith looks a bit different at six doesn't it because this antenna is uh, what are we about uh, well over one and a half wavelengths above the above the ground now. Um, okay well this is interesting because if you look at how much of that Aismith is actually yellow now uh, that is uh, equal to or greater than minus 60 B. So we've got some nice gain but we do have some nulls of course some deep nulls off the uh, off the sides as well. So in fact, our radiation pattern is now looking sort of uh, in, into four quarters, as you can see there. Um, it says that only 20 degrees of the 360 is is worse than minus 60, but that's wrong. It's actually 40 degrees, but still the vast majority of the antenna is doing very, very well. On the left hand side, you can see at the top there, the maximum gain at five degrees of, of the horizon is now 5.4 dB, which is pretty nice. And the uh, elevation angle on the right hand side, well, I've highlighted 45 degrees with a gain of 7 dB. Why 45 degrees? Well, 45 degrees is a nice angle for sporadic E. Lots of studies have shown that sort of the mean, the average angle uh, that sporadic E tends to hit is around uh, for, for HF and for high, for the uh, for the sort of low VHF bands like 6 meters, tends to be around an average of around 45 degrees. So we've got some nice gain around that uh, there, haven't we, with the far field plot? And our angle of maximum gain, what is it? Well, it's, actually, it's actually shooting straight up at 7.4 dB. But I wouldn't uh, be too unhappy with that. We've still got some nice gain at some reasonable angles. And that, uh, that gain at five degrees off the horizon looks, looks very, very nice indeed. Overall, would I install this antenna again? Yes, I would. But not now, and I'll tell you why. Because we're still maybe, I don't know, are we a year, are we two years away from the solar cycle really taking off? Who knows? The high HF bands haven't quite taken off yet into the stratosphere, even though they are on the sphere, actually. Um, so anything above sort of 17 metres is a bit hit and miss. 10 has been great this year for sporadic E, and we've had some multi-hop stuff across to the States and to Canada. It's been lovely. Um, but I wouldn't, as yet, rely on this for a lot of stuff on 12 and 15. And um, when the sporadic E season comes to a bit of a close in a month or two months or two's time, then until we get some winter sporadic E10 might get quiet again as well. However, 18 months time, two years time, when the higher HF bands start to rock, then having this sort of antenna with, okay, it is directional, but having this sort of antenna with the, the gain that we could be seeing off it, especially on the higher bands, um, could, prove, could pay some dividends. And don't forget six meters because when we get some sporadic E action on six, then this antenna could come into its own too. So overall, if you've got the room to install one of these, and maybe put up a nice antenna for 40 and 80 as well, this could be a good one. I've got a small garden, so whether I'll just rely on this antenna solely and lose out on 40 meters is probably not going to happen for a long period. But in the eye of the solar cycle really taking off, then an antenna like this can do you a good job. And if you've got a small space, then it's got to be worth a consideration as well. Click on here if you want to see a bit more about how doublets work and uh, how ladder line is a really effective way of, uh, of dealing with SWR and uh, reducing the losses on your, on your feed line. Anyway, thanks for watching. Take care and stay safe. 7-3.